I have a head here. And this head I got, if you get the comma key, you go to the project, you can just open up the demo anime head here. We'll have a little bit more fun with this one. So I'm going to go out of perspective mode, turn off the floor, and we're going to put some eyes on this thing real quick. So I think it's already uh, has Dynamesh on. So if you go to geometry here, go to Dynamesh, you're going to see it's already Dynameshable. Um, if you want to carve out or scoop out uh, an area for the eyeballs here, you can just go in your clay brush, just go to preferences, edit, turn off align cursor to surface, and now you can just kind of scoop that out. Um, you could also go in here and you could scoop it out a little bit more precisely if you wanted to. You can hold down Alt, uh, pull in some spheres. I'm going to turn on double under your display properties here. You can turn on double and then you can just move these spheres around and then when you control drag, control drag again, that'll just kind of carve out. Let's get a smooth stronger here. That'll carve out a couple uh, sockets in there. Uh, so now that we got these sockets, let's go ahead and uh, make some eyes. So in order to get these eyes in here, so you're, you know, anime eyes looks like, and I'm no expert, but it looks like, you know, normally you're going to have an eyeball width in between all these. Uh, that may not be so true. We're going to kind of adjust this here. And the only reason I'm putting eyeballs in here is when we make a Batman cowl, uh, we kind of have to go around some features of the face here. So let's see how this will work. So I'm going to go into insert sphere again. And let's go ahead and split mass points, and then I can go ahead and rotate these around. I'm going to use the polarized caps on those spheres to kind of dictate where my pupils would probably be. And that'll help us line up the eyelids and such. Uh, so once we've got the eyeballs in there, and you're going to have the brow, it's going to step back the upper eyelid, step back the lower eyelid, and then go back here to the, the cheekbone here. So that'll be good enough. And what I'm going to do to make the eyelids really quickly is I'm going to go to subtool here. And we'll put the head up at the top by hitting this little bent up arrow. So we've got the eyeballs here. If you want to rename that, you can go e eyes. And now we can delete, uh, duplicate this. So when I duplicate this, if I hit D, it's going to turn on my dynamic subdivision. Uh, we're going to solo mode here. And then Shift D turns that off. I'm going to hit D and then apply. And for you guys, that'll be under geometry dynamic here. And once you apply that, uh, it's going to get you a little smoother result. And uh, the reason I'm applying it is because I want to go ahead and Dynamesh this thing. So it's going to give me actual geometry instead of dynamesh, dynamic geometry here. And we'll just go ahead and Dynamesh these eyeballs. Uh, and inherited those Dynamesh properties uh, from the previous subtool that we drew it out on. Um, so now that that's Dynameshed here, I can go into uh, Deformations Inflate. And we'll just inflate up. Some eyeballs here. Uh, on the eyes, I am going to go ahead and hit D for dynamic, just so I can, I mean, I'm going to smooth that out eventually, so I just want to see how it's going to look smooth. And then really quickly, I'm just going to go over here, and we're going to do a trim curve. If we're going to solo mode, you're going to see, I can just trim this back. It's basically going to slice the sphere, fill the hole, and then I've got an upper eyelid here. Uh, before I do that, let's go ahead and duplicate this one more time. So we have upper eyelids and our lower eyelids. Um, Looks like upper eyelids are going to be the bulk of it, as is pretty standard. So you got the upper eyelids here, and then for this one, we'll go ahead and do the lower eyelids. And it'll be something a little bit more like this. And no. I'm like this. <laughs> I'm like this. Okay, and uh, now that I got those on there, and that's, you know, it looks a little bit like a family guy, creepy person. Uh, we can go ahead and kind of start moving this thing around. So I'm going to go ahead and go over here, and we'll just kind of start positioning this eyelid here. And for the lower eyelid, same thing. We're just going to go into our move brush here. And we'll go ahead and just start moving this around like so. And I'm going to Dynamesh all this together. This is just an easy way. Instead of going in there with my clay brush and like building all this up, this is just a little bit more of an easy way just to bring in some primitives and get your base shapes going in a more controlled manner as opposed to just going in there and sculpting it. Either way is fine. I'm not going to tell you how to do your job. Uh, this is just my preferred method for crispy eyelids here. Uh, of course, those eyelids are going to go into the side of the head here. And you can also alt-tap the side of the head if you'd like. All righty. Um, let's take that lower eyelid back just a bit. Man, I got some big eyes. I, I know that probably shouldn't surprise anybody. But, um, you know, I don't, I don't do this kind of sculpting often. And okay, so we've got this here, and we've got the sides of the face going in, and that's where it's going to go into the tear duct here. So we'll leave a little bit of room for that. And of course, we can always sculpt this out later, because what we're about to do is Dynamesh all this together. This is a, just to get our base forms in, and then we're going to go through and Dynamesh this thing again. Let's go ahead and take this down here. Something like this. Now, um, I want the eyes to be left alone here, so I'm going to take... 
uh, this eyelid and these heads. So let's take this head down one. I'm just going to merge these down. I have a hotkey for that. Uh, same for Photoshop. It is Control E. Uh, but you can go down here to Subtool Merge Down. And there you go. And then this eyeballs, I'll drop this down in the head. Uh, I still have my Dynamesh property, so I can just Control Drag. And that'll Dynamesh that. Now, if it Dynameshes it too low, uh, you can try a couple different things. You can turn on Project uh, when you Dynamesh, and that'll turn on. Uh, it'll pro it'll project it it'll dynamesh at a lower resolution then project back out. Uh, you also have to watch out. So see how along the edges you start getting newer, uh, kind of more concentrated geometry. If you don't want that, but you want to leave project on, make sure you go to your sub projection, turn that to 0.5. So if you undo that and then control drag again, uh, that'll go ahead and project, but you won't get those concentrated edges. Um, we don't really need these polygroups anymore. If we did, uh, you can just leave them on. I'm just going to hit control W. You don't, you don't have to do that, but I'm going to hit hold down shift and we'll start smoothing this out. Um, also, instead of projecting, you can also just, um, or, or you can project as well, but I'm just going to raise this resolution up just a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to go in here and smooth. Now we have Smooth Stronger turned on. I'm going to turn that down just a bit. And let's see if we can't just smooth out. I don't want to lose the crispiness of those edges on the eyelid too much. Here. Now at this point, if I'm not going to be making any major changes, I could go ahead and Z-remesh this as well. Um, but before I did that, I would want to make sure that I'm not making any major changes, like if I want to dig in a whole, you know, a whole bunch of stuff, or if I wanted to go in here and like do a stay cook and start doing crazy stuff. Um, you want to get all this stuff dialed in before you Z-remesh. Uh, but we can kind of clean this up a little bit. So let's go in here and we'll use our Damien Standard Brush. And we'll curve this around. And let's go ahead and I'm going to round that nose out just a tad. And we'll put in a little filter in here. And the mouth here, we'll go through and we'll kind of, again, just using the Damien Standard Brush. And for the Damien Standards, B, D, S. That'll bring in your Standard Brush. A little bit of finish on there. Let's go ahead and go in our Standard Brush here. Let's crank our Lazy Bradius up. And then uh, we'll let that go. And then I'm just going to car carve this out a little bit. Uh, you can also use the clay brush or the inflate brush if you want to kind of carve out just a tad here. And we're just kind of kind of go through and soften these up. You can also go in here and like, okay, this here's not that detailed. So you can kind of go in with your Damien standard and be like, okay, the tragus and the anti, or the tragus and the helix and the anti helix and all this stuff. You can kind of go in here and clean this up. I don't think I upped it that much. So yeah, this thing kind of digs back in here. You can kind of push this in, and then, yeah, this is going to follow this around. Go into your Damien standard if you really want to cut up in there. And then this will kind of go to a hole. This is going to be a little knob that sticks out, a little piece of cartilage in there, and then you got your ear hole in here. If your brushes ever start acting weird, just go to brush. I'm going to go to, you can reset current or reset all. I'll reset all brushes here. And then we'll crank that intensity back up. And we'll turn lazy mouse off again. There we go. Much better. And then we kind of smooth this down. So, and then this is going to kind of pull in here. Now, what I would do maybe is you can save out a vector displacement version of your ears, and then you can just kind of drag those on later, or insert mesh brushes if you want to use Dynamesh. And that way you don't have to go through every time you load up this head or any head. You can just have a bunch of ears saved out. And once you have a bunch of ears or one good ear, what you can do is just go through and make variants of that ear just by using the move brush. So when you're drawing an ear, you'd have to go in there and just draw a bunch of ears and render them out. Um, you know, render them and detail them up. Uh, in 3D modeling, once you have an ear, you can just go through here and I can just take this ear off. Let's go ahead and duplicate this head, go out of X symmetry, hold down control shift, let's grab select lasso. What is going on? You know what might be happening? My Wacom, Wacom pin might be getting a little dirty behaving erratically. All right, so we've got the, this ear here. I've got that duplicated off. I'm going to go into solo mode, and we'll go ahead and grab this. Now, this will be my insert ear brush that I can use later, so I don't have to keep doing that. So we'll go ahead and take this one. We'll go ahead and delete hidden, close holes. Uh, when I do a close holes operation, it gives me, I don't want these really thin areas here, so I'm going to hit W, hold down control and tap, and then control drag out a little bit of thickness on there. And then control drag again, that'll just dynamesh it all back together. And kind of smooth this transition out. So now I have an insert mesh brush. 
that I can use. But before I make one, what I can do is I'm going to go ahead and clone this off into it. So let's put a copy of it out here. I'll just delete it out of my subtool here because I don't need it with that head anymore. And then with this ear, um, you can just duplicate it off. Which you, if you hover over duplicate, you see it's Control Shift D. Um, you can hit duplicate, Control Shift D, whatever you want to do. If you want any more information on it, just hit control and that'll give you more information. So as you're hovering over anything in the interface, it'll give you more information if you hold down control. Uh, so now that we've got this one, now we can go in here with our snake hook brush or our move vacuum and we can pull out like a pair of Vulcan ears or elf ears. And you can start making variants and let's say you want this to go here and then this um, anti-helix in here, maybe these things. Every So ears and noses and mouths. Uh, not that, you know, those are all part of the face, so everybody's face is going to be very unique, but it seems like ears especially are very unique just based on the person. So go in here, and, you know, like this lobe can be different. So we're just going to mask and then move that stuff out. And then you got an ear variant, and then you can, you know, go back to your original, duplicate that off. You can scale it up, but really scale doesn't matter because we go to insert these things later. Um, it's going to kind of pull this in and then down. And usually this is like with the one third mark here, but uh, now you can go in here with like maybe your inflate brush and you can go and like round these things out, kind of puff this up a little bit and then scoop this out again and just kind of go through and refine. Now once you got all these ears saved out, all you need to do is you got these ears kind of sticking here. Let's go to, uh, let's see, let's make sure that they're lined up the way we want basically want them just looking straight at me here. And now I can go to B, create insert multi mesh. And now I've got a bunch of ears. So if I go back to anything, let's take a cylinder, make poly mesh 3D here. And I go X to go into X symmetry. And now I can just drag out a bunch of ears. And like I said, scale doesn't really matter because you can just go through here and scale these things out. And then you can dyna mesh all this stuff together. And you're off to the races. Anyways, back to our head here little cut in here and then so we're gonna put a little bit more draft on this character here so I'm gonna go into my regular move brush and it looks like these brushes are acting weird maybe it's just me maybe my Wacom is slowly dying there we go maybe it wasn't acting weird maybe I'm acting weird I'll, just, I'll blame my tools so I want to put a little bit more draft into this face, make sure this kind of wraps around just a little bit more. I don't know if that's like an anime thing to make it look like it's flat or what, but that's just what I'm going for on this particular character. So maybe I'm not stylizing it enough, but we'll, f we'll figure it out. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to kind of bump out this upper lip with our standard brush. I'm going to crank that intensity up a little bit and turn off the lazy mouse again because I keep resetting my brushes because I keep feeling weird for some reason. Like I said, maybe I'm crazy this morning. I think I got plenty of sleep, I think. Go back to Smooth Stronger and we'll take that, hold down Shift and just turn that down just a bit. Okay, so I can go and smooth this out. And if you wanted to like make him uh, a little more chiseled, you can go in here and put in these laugh lines and then pull these things up and then go in here with the clay brush and kind of build up this and then go underneath his lip. Uh, this is probably gonna be a bit much for this particular character to kind of build him up in a super realistic manner. Uh, but you can kind of just lay in your forms a little bit like that and then smooth it out. And that'll just kind of start dialing in where you might want to take it and then you can just smooth it back out. So just to get your forms in, you can just very quickly dial those in and then on a stylized character, just go back in and smooth it back out. So you can kind of see, yeah, I don't want them to look like Christopher Robin or a real boy, but maybe you start approaching that. Same thing with the forms on the nose here. If I start making planes, I'm just taking my Damien standard, holding down Alt and then going back in and smoothing just a tad just to kind of round out these forms, and then I'm going to take this nose here. So I am kind of stepping away just a bit from that super stylized look. And then again, I can just hold down Alt, and we can pull out just a little bit of a line on the top and the bottom of the mouth here. There we go. Oh, what a cutie. And now we've got this ear here. Let's go ahead and go into my clay brush, and we'll go ahead and I'm going to go in here with my Damien Standard. We'll carve this in. And we'll carve this in too. And then I think back here, I think this is going to be a little bit more filled out. I'm going to go ahead and smooth this here. Good enough. So let's talk about that Batman cow we started with 20 minutes ago. 
So we've got this little character here. Or if we want to put eyelids on here or eyelashes, we can do that too. Uh, for that, for the eyelashes and stuff, I would just do like BTO. And we can just go in here and kind of draw in some geo like this. And then we can just go here, 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 here. And then go ahead and split mass points. So now I got geometry. If I hit D, that's going to go ahead and give us our dynamic subdivision. I'm going to go ahead and do uncrease all. It's under your crease menu. Geometry, crease, somewhere in here. See why I have a custom menu and I don't like digging through here. And uh, now you can just kind of use this to kind of noodle back. And it is just dynamic subdivisions here. So if it's a boy or it's a girl, uh, I've kind of left it ambiguous. Um, so you may want to exaggerate this or, you know, keep it kind of subtle depending on which one you're making. And if you need more resolution, what you can do is I'm going to hit Control D once. That's going to give me one subdivision here. We'll go ahead and hit Shift D. Uh, we turn off dynamic. There we go. So now you can kind of see the actual subdivisions here. So we've gone out of dynamic mode. I can delete lower and then hit D again, and that'll give me dynamic preview again. I usually just, I tend to like to work in dynamic preview just a bit more. Uh, if I want to flatten this out, I can go in here with my trim dynamic. Let's go ahead and do Shift D. And we'll hit Control D for actual subdivisions again a couple more times. And then I'm going to go in here with my trim dynamic, and then I can just kind of flatten this out. Um, if you wanted to, you could just model this. Uh, it kind of depends on how you want to, how and where you want to spend your time. You could go in there and just like box model uh, beautiful eyelashes. I tend to prefer uh, just doing the quick and dirty method, which is trim dynamic or H polish to kind of get these flat shapes in here. And then I can go in and rebuild it or use Z Remesher to do the heavy lifting for me. Uh, if I spend too much time box modeling, I, it doesn't usually tend to work that well as far as time management. Uh, I'm going to make this just a little bit more obvious. I don't want to give him like bags, him or her, like bags under their eyes here. But I do want to kind of just make that a little more obvious. Now, as far as face shape goes in here, you can go in here with like the inflate brush. It's probably a good one because that's going to have a nice, smooth... Uh, soft transition here so you can kind of inflate some of these forms out. You can't go into the clay brush, you'll just have to do a little bit more smoothing or clay buildup, but you have to do a lot of smoothing. Um, for the brows here, you can try going in here and maybe holding down Alt and kind of just putting in maybe just a slight ridge here and then like where the orbits kind of come down. Let's go in with inflate. It just it, that inflates so nice with this type of super soft smooth face, you know, inflate just works just a little bit better, I think. So we'll kind of inflate this outer edge just a little bit here. And then for this inside, we can kind of maybe carve this in with our standard brush and get just really, really subtle forms here. Uh, same thing for the eyebrows here, if you wanted to. Um, you can just kind of sculpt them in, or you can go like BTO, which is your topology brush, and then you can kind of just dial in eyebrows and just tap on here. Oops, looks like I messed that one up. There we go. Split mass points. Uncrease all. Or don't, you don't have to uncrease all. You can hit D. And then you can go in here like your crease level. Drop that down to like 2, smooth set of 3. And now that'll kind of soften out your edges as well. And then you can go through here and just dial in whatever you want for eyebrows. But eyebrows probably overdoing it because we're putting on a Batman cowl. So Batman cowl, how do we do it? 